All I can say is we all have these projects that don't work. It doesn't matter if you've been sewing for a day or you've been sewing since you were five. And all I can say is just keep going. Be persistent. It'll work out. It'll work out some way. Who knows? I don't know, but don't give up. <laughs> I'm Jennifer Weiss, and you're watching Workroom Social TV. On today's episode of I Made My Wedding Outfit, I am so excited to talk to Bella. Bella is the maker-in-chief of WhatBellaMade.com and is in competition with herself over how far she can push the envelope when it comes to things she sews. Hi, Bella. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, Jennifer. I'm so excited to be here. Yay, we're going to talk all about your not one, but two wedding dresses. Awesome. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that you are a Californian living in Germany, and you've been there for some time. I'm wondering, what was it like when you first got there, uh, trying to figure out how to source materials for your sewing hobby? And then how did that help you or maybe um, make you search a little harder? when you were sourcing materials for your wedding dress? I've been living here for almost 10 years now, and I am still on the search for good fabric stores. <laughs> Coming from California um, and America in general, there is so there are so many fantastic fabric stores. And so coming here was a bit of a shock. There is not the smorgasbord of fabric to be had that I'm used to. <laughs> There is a little fabric store that I go to here in my town of Stuttgart. But normally what I do is when I go home and visit my family in California, I go on a big fabric haul <laughs> and then I bring it all with me here. So I have boxes of hoarded fabric from America <laughs> that um, I then sew up while I'm here um, until I can go home again and get more fabric. <laughs> For the first wedding dress, I actually found the embroidered lace or embroidered tool, it's embroidered tool on Etsy. And I think I found it in like on like a an Instagram ad that popped up and I was I was on the search for what I wanted my wedding dress to look like, saw that and thought this is exactly what I want. <laughs> and I, I bought it. And then I went home to California to sew my dress and I bought the silk charmeuse that is under the silk tool in California from Stone Mountain and Daughter Fabrics. Sourcing fabric is always a challenge. <laughs> it's always an adventure. Let's say it's always an adventure. Since you sewed your wedding dress when you were back home in California, how much time did you have to do that? Probably a week. Wow. <laughs> yeah. The pattern that I used is one of my all-time favorite patterns. I think it's Vogue number 1422. I know the number by heart because I've made it so many times. <laughs> So I knew that it fit me. I didn't have to do, do any twalls or fittings. The hard part was cutting out the embroidered tool. Um, it was important for me that it has uh, flowers and plants on it, leaves and so on. And uh, I wanted to make sure that the plants all grew up the body. It took a long time to place the plants where I wanted them and so that they would go up from the skirt into the bodice continuously um, without such a strong break at the waistline. In addition to the placement of the fabric on your dress, I understand that it was really important for you to be able to wear this dress again. This first wedding dress that we're talking about, you didn't want to just wear it once. Can you talk about what other considerations you were making as you were working on that dress, and especially since you only had one week to do it in? 
it was really important for me to make a dress that was going to be wearable also after the wedding. I chose this pattern specifically for that reason because it is one of my favorite patterns because it is a dress that I wear all the time. I love the cut of it. It's a simple bodice with, I think it's a, a quarter circle skirt. That's what you call it. Well, it's an A A line skirt and it's just so simple and so flattering, but it has a V cut back, which I just find makes it a little special. So our wedding was on top of a hill that we had to hike up. <laughs> um, it wasn't a big hike, but it was it was quite a steep incline. So the dress had to also be able to make that trek. <laughs> it's not a floor length gown. Um, it ends at my ankles so I could move freely. Yeah, it, it was it's just a it's a simple dress. It's made out of very special and beautiful materials and I think that was the perfect choice for me on my wedding day. Side note, I have never worn that dress again. <laughs> but it was so important to me. <laughs> you still can never say never. I still can. I am still young. There will be a time. There will be a time where I can wear that dress again. So because of special circumstances having to do with you living overseas, you weren't able to have all of your friends and family attend your legal wedding ceremony, which was kind of a bummer. But the silver lining there is that you got to have not one but two ceremonies and you got to create not one but two wedding dresses. So whereas your first wedding dress, you used a pattern that you know and love, a tried and true pattern, if you will. For your second dress, your second dress was really led by a specific piece of fabric. Now, I meet a lot of students who they are have fabric stashes and, you know, other really uh, special pieces of fabric. And I hear all the time, I just don't know what to do with this fabric. I love this fabric. It really inspires me. I know it can be something, but I don't know what to do with it. And people are worried that perhaps they might mess up with this really special piece of fabric or they might end up um, you know, mismatching the fabric with silhouette um, or what have you. Can you talk about the process that you went through to figure out what your special fabric wanted to be in your second wedding dress? This fabric is was a beautiful, light, metallic brocade white with gold um, embroidery in a big floral print. And I had had this fabric stashed for easily three to four years. And I knew it had to be for a special occasion, but I didn't know what that special occasion was until the first wedding. When we had the first wedding, we already had planned that we would celebrate a bigger celebration in a year with all our friends and family. And I knew already then that I wanted to use this fabric, but I didn't know what it would become. I just knew I wanted that fabric to be my wedding dress. So when the time came, again, I went back to California. And again, I think I only had like a couple weeks to sew this dress together. And I took a lot of time just like days, like I spent a couple days just taking the fabric, draping it across me in all different fashions, really just asking the fabric what it wanted to become. It looked really good, just draped over my shoulder. And that's it. Like, it didn't want to do anything else. It just wanted to drape. So I decided to go for a one-shouldered bat wing. I think it's called a bat wing dress. It's very simple, uh, very form-fitting. It basically goes all the way down to the floor. And it has this big wing of beautiful metallic floral brocade. And I just felt like a 
goddess in this dress. I was so happy in this dress. It's not a kind of dress I wear or have ever worn. It was a very new style for me, but I loved it and I felt like a queen in this metallic floral brocade dress. I think that's the way we all want to feel on our wedding days, right? Like a queen. Absolutely. Absolutely. I will never forget when I turned to go down the aisle, which was our our deck <laughs> outside our house. I will never forget the <gasps> that everyone made. And it, it made me feel even more like a queen. <laughs> I love it. You're going to have to figure out some excuse to wear that again. That is actually the dress that I really want to wear again. I need to go to the Met Gala. Someone invite me to the Met Gala. (laughs) (laughs) I hope someone's watching on YouTube right now. Yes. And sends you an invite. (laughs) Well, so this brings up an interesting thing that I thought of. Now, you are a professional stage performer. I'm wondering how that part of you, that creative aspect, that professional aspect, how did that influence either of your wedding dresses or maybe both, maybe in different ways? The first dress is just me. It's just me. And it's very simple, but also playful. The second dress, because it is gold and metallic, because it is a a different style dress than you wouldn't normally see, it is kind of going in the direction of costume. Maybe something that I would wear on stage. Yeah, I I can definitely see that there would be a connection between my my stage life and this wedding dress, for sure. We wear a lot of silk dresses on stage, actually. And we have like silk chiffon veils draped over our arms to show the movement of our of our arms and our bodies, what those movements are doing with the space around us. And so this bat wing kind of, um, it definitely has a similarity to that. Now that you say that. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. It was all in your subconscious. Yes, absolutely. Thinking about the second wedding dress, the one that you draped with the amazing bat wing, that project Um, as we said, you made without a pattern. And as you said, it was very form fitting. Can you walk us through the process of what it was like to go from a tried and true pattern that you know fits you um, just the way you want to working on this new project that took a bit of trial and error? How did you approach the fitting? Did you learn anything that you can impart on us to help us with our fitting? I have to say that Uh, It is a pattern. I spent a lot of time looking for bat winged dresses and there are a lot of tutorials on YouTube, but for Jersey, not for a woven fabric. But after a lot of research, I did find a Berta pattern. It was what I was looking for, but I did have to make several twalls. For my body, um, I have a very big waist to hip ratio. My waist is a lot smaller than my hips. And that's always a big challenge for me in fitting is getting it wide enough for my hips. But it's it can't be that wide because it still has to fit my waist. Otherwise, it's just a barrel. And that did take a lot of time. The great thing about this dress was it was a pretty simple dress. Once I got it to fit my hips, I could just bring in the seams at my waist. It is hard to fit yourself. It is. It's one of the biggest challenges. I would say not until you have probably made a hundred outfits for yourself do you really get a feeling for how your body is. I used to sew the same two dresses over and over again, probably a hundred times because I knew that they fit and I didn't want to go beyond those two dresses. (laughs) And my first wedding dress was one of those dresses. (laughs) 
it wasn't until I sewed maybe like a hundred of these two dresses until I got so fed up with them that I had to really push myself to start sewing other things and really exploring my shape, my body, and how to fit it. We're all different. We all have beautiful bodies and they all require something else. So until you take the time to find out what your body requires, it just takes, it just takes a long time, unfortunately. <laughs> Consistency is the, is the lesson there, I think. Yes, absolutely. Or persistence, maybe persistence. Persistence. Yeah. Well, so it sounds like you have come to a place in your sewing journey now where you feel very comfortable tackling new projects and fitting them to yourself. I'm wondering if you can think back, think back to earlier in your sewing journey. Is there a time that you can remember where you have left those two dresses that you knew and loved so well and you're trying new things and oh man, you just were having the hardest time and perhaps maybe even feeling like you were never going to make it to the other side. What was that like and how did you get through? Persistence. <laughs> Absolutely persistence. I had such a project um, a few months ago. I made a whole suit. I made um, trousers and a, a blazer and a crop top to go with it. And I was so excited. This I Again, I had the fabric already. It had been sitting in my stash for a couple years. It was an orange mix. It has a little bit of stretch in it. And I was so excited for this project because I finally figured out what to do with this orange fabric. And I was going to make a whole power suit. That fabric had that little bit of stretch in it and it didn't matter what I did. The fabric just did not want to work with me. The jacket was a mess. The lapels were wobbly. It looked terrible. Um, the pants, no matter how many times I tried to hem them, they'd always be a different, a different length. The crop top, even though I had made like five muslins, didn't fit. It didn't matter what I did or what I tried. It just did not want to work. But I would not give up because I wanted it so badly. And so many people were like, just put it down, leave it, you know, leave it for a couple months and come back with, you know, a fresh perspective. But I knew, I knew that if I did that, I wouldn't come back for it for another, who knows? <laughs> so I just kept at it. I kept at it. There were a lot of tears, a lot of cursing, <laughs> everything. But I made it work somehow because I was so persistent. <laughs> it is one of my all-time favorite proudest makes um, I have ever made. It is my power suit because I owned that suit. I told it that it was <laughs> going to work <laughs> and it is 100% mine. <laughs> so all I can say is we all have these projects that don't work. It doesn't matter if you've been sewing for a day or you've been sewing since you were Five. It doesn't matter. We all have these projects. And all I can say is just keep going. Just keep going. Be persistent. It'll work out. It'll work out some way. Maybe it doesn't work out now, but who knows? Or maybe it works out for someone else and you give it to them. Who knows? I don't know. But don't give up. Do you have any pro tips for us about working with that stretch fabric? One thing I forgot was um, the first like sewing 101 things that I forgot was to interface the lapels. And so that's why the whole front of the jacket came out so wobbly. You know why that happened is because I thought 
I'm a pro. I'm an experienced sewer. I don't need to read the instructions. Had I read the instructions, it would have told me interface your lapels now. That was the one major mistake. I had to take out the whole jacket, interface the whole front of the jacket, and start again. That's maybe one of the first tips I would give is be humble. <laughs> Be humble, take your time. It doesn't matter if you've been sewing for years or a day. In the end, <laughs> it's about um, being humble. I don't know. <laughs> I think that's a good life lesson. Yeah. Now, I understand that your mother taught you how to sew. I'm wondering, what did she think about the fact that you wanted to and successfully did make your wedding dresses? She was not surprised in the least. I think when it comes to my sewing and my creativity, she knows that that is just in me and I can't be any other way. She's always very supportive, but I wouldn't say she's ever really surprised because she just knows me so well. So her mother taught her how to sew and she taught me how to sew. She just told me that when she started sewing, she way surpassed her mother in her mother's sewing skills. And she just told me that I have now way surpassed her and her sewing skills. And we're both wondering uh, how it's going to be for the next generation. You know, it's, it can only go, <laughs> it can only go up. I love it. That's so sweet. I wouldn't be here without her, literally. <laughs> Thanks to our moms. Thanks to our moms. Thank you, mom. <laughs> Okay, Bella, we are going to play a little game, uh, a yeah. fun game called mm -hmm. Would You Rather? Mm -hmm. So I have a couple of scenarios for okay. you, and uh, you're just going to decide which you would rather do. Would you rather sew a garment made out of vinyl or burlap? Vinyl. Absolutely vinyl. Just recently, I got into faux leather. I made a whole faux leather dress. I'm definitely in that vinyl faux leather flow at the moment. So even though it's a pain, <laughs> it's a pain to sew, but... Would you rather, for the rest of your life, cut using only dull dressmaking shears or really sharp thread snips? Oh, that's horrible. That is <laughs> both terrible, terrible options. Um, I guess the thread snips, if they're forever sharp, maybe. Okay, then I guess we have to go with the thread snips. Oh, but that's a hard one. That's a bad one. Would you rather you either have the choice of having a pattern that fits you perfectly out of the envelope, but you're missing two pieces or having a fully complete pattern, but you have to make 10 alterations to get it to fit you. Ooh, I guess, well, hmm. I guess it depends on if the pattern is worth it or not. If I really want to make this pattern or not, maybe I would go for the pattern where I have to make the two pieces. I think I could do it. I think I could do it. You could but, do but, it. Yeah, I could do it. So let's pick that one. Okay. And the last question, would you rather for the rest of your life sew only one sewing pattern? You only get one sewing pattern for the rest of your life. You just got to keep making it over and over again. Or you can make any pattern you want, but you only get to use one fabric for the rest of your life. Oh, that's so hard. I have no idea. Good thing it's not real. <laughs> Yeah, good thing it's not real. <laughs> One would be good for my budget. <laughs> Could I make alterations to that pattern, that one pattern? Sure. Then I guess I choose the pattern, the one pattern. Oh, that's a hard one. These are terrible. <laughs> this really does get worse and worse. <laughs> oh. Well, thank you so much for playing along. 
Well, Bella, thank you so much for joining me today on this episode of I Made My Wedding Outfit. Um, Will you let everyone know where they can find you to see more of your sewing? You can find me on Instagram at what Bella made. And I also have a sewing blog at www.whatbellamade.com. I also host workshops and sometimes give tutorials. So definitely go check me out. Thank you so much, Jennifer, for inviting me. This was really fun. It's been really fun. Thank you, everyone, for watching Workroom Social TV. Before you head out, be sure to subscribe to our channel by clicking the button below and giving us a big thumbs up to let Bella know that you liked hearing about her sewing. Until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.